Okay. <laughs> so we are doing a get to know your CETO podcast Seven. tonight. It's a, mm. uh, it's yeah. uh, I'm always set, watching that. Settle yeah. like ghetto, you know. I know. I'm always watching that. <laughs> uh, we'll make it work. Yeah. Um, so yeah, uh, we'll we'll just have a conversation. Try try and have fun with it. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't know when I'll release this. Yeah, um, whenever. Keep me and Kai did a couple of these years ago, and even then, it was like. Yeah, I caught I caught those, and I was like, these are actually really interesting. Okay. So good. Yeah. Nice. Okay. Well, we're gonna. Um, I'll just count us in then. Microdose, yeah, microdose. Hosted by Kush Hayes and Robin Seto. Talking to talk, cause they got things for you to know. Let's go party with Miss Robin in the games on Cameo. Yeah, microdose, microdose, dose, dose. Microdose, microdose, dose, dose. Microdose, microdose, dose, dose. Microdose, microdose, dose, dose. What gets this next? Go and take a guess. No matter who it is, every episode's the best. Every episode's the best. Every episode's the best. If you disagree, you're crazy simple as chess. Microdose, 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 yeah, microdose. What's good, y'all? Kush Hayes here, coming to you, bonus edition of the Microdose, doing the Get to Know Your Podcaster event. Not, not, not sure exactly when we're releasing this. We're, we're definitely talking about Robin Seto, Miss Robin. If you're nasty, how you doing tonight? Hey, feeling good. Excellent, feeling good. excellent. It's, it's definitely your time to, to have one of these podcasts. Kai's done one. I've done one. Len Kabazinski's done one before you, which was really very interesting. Oh, um, that's fun. I'm not sure when we're releasing this. So just to put a little time stamp on it, we're we're about four days away from having a new president. And <laughs> Disney Plus dropped the WandaVision series today. It's only got two episodes. I could recite to you front to back of all 56 minutes of it. And you there wouldn't be any spoilers because you'd just be like, what it what so so what happened? <laughs> um, currently, right now, uh, YouTube sensation John Campia is having an open spoiler discussion, and probably he's probably going to do a four-hour marathon, and he's probably going to make about two hundred dollars an hour just to go. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, I I got one <laughs> extra episode ahead of you guys, and I can't really tell you anything about it. So, <laughs> and and I'm not saying don't give the man money. I'm just saying make him make him earn it. And this this. This is probably the easiest money he's ever made. But <laughs> I feel like I'd be irritated doing that. Just like, yeah, I, I saw what you saw, dude. I don't know what to tell you. It's, uh, <laughs> the, the comedy was funny. They're a cute couple. I like their their chemistry. Uh, uh, oh, thanks, thanks for donating. Okay. Yeah, I don't know what to tell you, dude. Uh, it's it was fun comedy. They're a cute <laughs> couple. Um, I, I don't know how this is gonna lead into Doctor Strange. Um, but mm. okay, thanks for donating, dude. Bye okay, bye. Uh, well, we're, we're we're gonna just succumb to rule of three on that one. <laughs> not not about Kush tonight. It's about it's about Robin Seto. Robin, Hello, how old man. are you as of this recording? As of this moment, I'm twenty nine, oh. uh, and I am turning thirty in the year twenty twenty one. Okay. Well, yes. When in twenty twenty one will you be thirty? Oh, in April the fifteenth. Okay. Nice. No yeah. traditional tax day. Oh gosh, uh, I'm not sure when uh, tax day is this year. <laughs> oh, true. Yeah, normal, but it's normally the fifteenth. Yeah, death yeah. taxes and Robin, three oh. things guaranteed. Hello. Yep. You didn't ask for it, but here I am. Hmm. You uh, <laughs> you currently in Sacramento? I've been in Sacramento. I've been out, and I've been back. <laughs> okay. Well, where uh, where else have you lived outside of Sacramento? Um. I live very, 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 very briefly in Oakland. <laughs> okay. How was that? Uh, it was bad. <laughs> <laughs> How long were you in Oakland? Um, okay. Well, I went to uh, California College of the Arts mm-hmm. right out of high school in 2009. 
Um, and they house all their freshmen in a dorm in the Rockridge area of Oakland. Okay. And it's a pretty nice yuppie area of Oakland, but it's still Oakland. Mm-hmm. Um, so it's still pretty shitty. Oh. And uh, it was a waste of money. And I, I just felt like this is a lot, a lot, a lot of money mm-hmm. for like nothing. <laughs> mm. uh, now, are um, you coming out of pocket? Is this uh, your parents' foot in the bill? Is there a scholarship? Had, a little um, of everything? Yeah, I had some scholarship. I had some scholarship. I had some loans, mm-hmm. and parents were were fronting that stuff at the time. Um, luckily, uh, I was able to pay back. M- pretty much most of it <laughs> and then mm-hmm. uh anything my parents covered i i just worked and paid them back for um which was part of the agreement for me being like i can't keep going to this art school <laughs> mm-hmm. did you ever graduate college yes yes <laughs> okay what, what 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 is your degree <clears throat> so um i went to sacramento state university I, uh, well, that's where I graduated from. Mm -hmm. Um, And my bachelor's degree is in studio art with a focus on electronic art, Hmm. which basically means I played with Photoshop for a couple semesters. (laughs) Um, Mm -hmm. Yeah. Did you do Uh, it in the normal four? Did you you do it in the average five? Was was there six or seven? It was about six years. Okay. Um, well, because I I didn't finish even the first semester of art school. Okay. I withdrew like you know like three three months into the semester barely, mm-hmm. um, and then I started at American River College mm-hmm. in uh, the spring. Okay. So that was um. And then I didn't know what I wanted to do. I had kind of like a, a little bit of trauma from the being that close to the art world for the first time. You know, you, you go from high school having uh, stars in your eyes about your future. Mm-hmm. and um, Fresh pack of clothes in your purse. You just think, um, you know, I've been dreaming of pursuing my, uh, my career as an artist whatever shape that may take and when you first get a taste of what it's really like out there Mm -hmm. it's really confusing Mm -hmm. and um they don't really take the time to communicate very well anyway Mm -hmm. uh everybody's kind of up their own ass and and so to speak um and if they weren't uh they weren't very good at teaching Hmm. have you found though that like just just outside of school like the rest of life is all like that too like it is a big shock the first time you're on your own yeah Um, it definitely is a lot more disappointing um in in all the ways that uh you think of as a teenager (laughs) how long have you been doing art like what i mean everyone Everyone's, you know, trying to trace within the lines and all that stuff <laughs> in, in elementary school. But like, when did you, when did you know, like, this is something I, that I, I should be doing or, or what, when, when did <laughs> parents start taking it seriously and encouraging it or. Um, uh, I come from a, a, a pretty creative artsy fartsy family. They're, okay. They're not like hippies or anything, but my dad's a musician and taught music and, mm-hmm. um, you know, it was always very encouraging of whatever our passions were. Dig. So I, I've been drawing and doing arts and enjoying that kind of stuff for as long as I can remember. Mm-hmm. And I guess uh, I can't really remember a time when it wasn't encouraged in my life. So okay. in some weird way, I, I mean, I was just always like, yeah, this is what I'm good at. Mm-hmm. And I like doing it. And people think that I'm pretty good at it. Mm-hmm. I'm going to keep doing it. <laughs> okay. Um, and I was just, I was a, a cartoon kid. I really loved cartoons growing up. Mm-hmm. Uh, what what cartoons were you watching? I, I watched a lot of um, Tom and Jerry was like one of my favorites as like a like a four year old. I remember okay. watched a lot of uh, 
you know, Chuck Jones cartoons, mm. and, uh, Tex Avery, uh, all those um, early Warner Brothers stuff. Mm -hmm. And um, <laughs> um, because uh, I'm I'm the youngest of three children and my older siblings are 13 and nine years older than me. Hmm. Um, they had a lot of old stuff. Okay. Uh, my parents had a lot of old stuff, a lot of VHSs and mm -hmm. a lot of Betamax tapes <laughs> with stuff recorded off the television. Um, a lot of that. It was um, a lot of Smurfs on there. Mm -hmm. uh, Garfield. Okay. Um, <laughs> and Garfield has stayed with me for my whole life. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I, I too um, like the Garfield. I could never get into the Smurfs. I was just always just ir easily irritated and annoyed with the Smurfs. I, mean, I, don't, I don't know what it was. <laughs> I don't particularly remember um, like having any affection for the Smurfs. Mm -hmm. Mostly because it was like, yeah, there's Brainy and he's kind of a dick. Mm -hmm. And then there's the other one who's dumb. And and there was one girl, and that, that's always a weird thing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, oh, strawberry shortcake. Um, yeah, and so a lot of stuff that was actually uh, <laughs> well before my time I was exposed to growing up, along with whatever was contemporary going on. I can't. Um, Sailor Moon was going on in okay. the States when I was about five years old. So I was exposed to anime at a really young age. Mm -hmm. And um, my sister was always really into that stuff too. So I was always kind of like, Ooh, what's, what's big sis into also. Um, mm -hmm. I'm sure she, she appreciates that now, but I mean, at the time she was just like, leave me the fuck alone. <laughs> <laughs> so I was just like, a, you know, an irritating little child. And she was, you know, g g going into, adolescence becoming mm -hmm. a teenager and, uh, mm -hmm. getting into her shit and ruining her games <laughs> <laughs> um so the art thing started real young and i've always wanted to pursue something in art um i think around um probably eighth grade i decided i wanted to work like in cartoon production somehow mm -hmm. um Cartoon Network and Nickelodeon, a lot of great shows going on. Mm -hmm. uh, SpongeBob was blowing up. <laughs> still strong, too. That yeah, thing's over 20 years old now. Somehow still going. So, mm -hmm. you know, but, uh, and then you get there to, to that environment where you could pursue that, and it's just nothing like you. It's not as sexy as you it's, thought it would be. It's well, first of all, it's not as sexy as you thought it was going to be, and um, that environment just doesn't exist anymore. Like that whole era of cartoon making has moved on. Like it's passe now. Okay. So uh, you have this whole new style, and part of that is just because of the feeder school into these animation departments is Cal Arts, where everybody uh, animates like each other and uh it's just it's just not uh it's not aesthetically what i was looking for and okay. i found those people also really difficult to work with okay um, what 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 story would you make if you could make a cartoon your way no olds barred <laughs> i mean the budget's coming out of your pocket so take that in mind but you get to make any <laughs> cartoon you want how long is it going to be and what is it about Oh man! I is mean, it adapted from something else? Is it in your? It brain? wasn't the whole thing. Was I didn't want to like uh, produce my own cartoon. I wanted to be a part of the team because okay. I mean I have some good ideas here and there. I think I'm I'm good at contributing. Um, as I've gotten older, I realize I don't really have super great original ideas. I just haven't practiced enough like exploring smaller ideas that I do have that might mm. have potential. So uh, uh. Mm. um I think you might be in your own head on that one. I mean you might be dead on the money, but <laughs> I know I know there's many many ideas I've thrown away and then those somehow someone else also had the same idea like five years later and then made some bullshit movie out of it with whether we <laughs> liked it or not, like everybody got paid on it still. Like 
and just go like, oh, god damn it. I, I could have made superhero disaster movie too uh <laughs> well that's like i uh i, was I very remember into... writing a script when i was young where leslie nielsen from the naked gun walks <laughs> in and does a fall <laughs> and tell, gives me like an assignment and i'm just like whoa leslie nielsen what are you doing here dude <laughs> and that that could have very much happened like 20 years ago um with uh, those those series of movies i think um when i was about 14 between like uh, 12 to 15 i was really into creative writing okay <laughs> and i wrote essentially twilight i believe like it. like the the it. basic concepts and i was like okay and honestly i think mine was a little bit more creative <laughs> but it Probably. also wasn't based around like the mormon church <laughs> I, don't, I don't know anything about it i've not uh, seen a twilight movie yet uh, well, I mean, based on the on the novel, a novel. I've definitely not read a Twilight novel. They're um, hard to read. Okay. Um, <laughs> I mean, they're basically. I mean, the reason I came up with it as is like a fourteen year old is because Twilight itself, if you read it, it's written like a fourteen year old wrote it. Like I believe it. A pretty smart fourteen year old, but still a pretty dumb. 14 year old i wouldn't be surprised if it was actually written by a puerto rican dude who li living in his mom's basement and just hired that woman like to, to, to be his avatar like you gotta tell people you wrote this no no i don't have any notes for you don't it doesn't matter if you ever read it just 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 tell them whatever just tell them however you think you wrote it it's okay it's bizarre but, <clears throat> but yeah yeah <laughs> uh but through through trying to um get into the actual like uh, I wanted to do storyboarding mm -hmm. and sequential kind of artwork stills mm -hmm. maybe sort of even get some experience doing animatics mm -hmm. um, and then weasel my way into doing voice acting because that was like my secret secret dream that mm -hmm. I was like I'm not going to pursue that but I am going to pursue that but I never did <laughs> oh do you think you'd still want to pursue that? I think it could be fun, but I also um, I know that I thrive on a regular schedule, okay. and uh, when you do any sort of acting professionally, you kind of don't get that. <laughs> hmm. I so. mean, it's just kind of one of the sacrifices with, with yeah, the, for the and game. and that's kind of my thing is. Um, Maybe I'm just not at that point where I'm sick of the nine to five yet, where I'm mm. like, ah, fuck it. I'm just ready to, to dive into this thing head first. Mm -hmm. Maybe I'll get there someday. Or maybe I'll just continue to be content, like doing whatever I can in my free time. I mm. mean, I feel I'm pretty happy with what I'm doing now. <laughs> okay. Well, as long as you're happy, then it's okay. So. I'm trying, but yeah, the. Mm, so yeah, I spent six years in college because I, I spent the first three at a community college mm -hmm. being like, maybe I don't want to be an artist. That's okay. I uh, I don't think I know anybody that completed college in four years. I know one chick that did it in three, but everyone else was like five and more. <laughs> and most people did it around six, a couple, you know, work, mm -hmm. work life, all that shit. So seven. But yeah. then I know two people who went like 15, 16 years, okay? Yeah. Now, now one kept going back and she kept getting multiple degrees, but that doesn't stop us from calling her Dr. Sarah, despite not, not having a degree. <laughs> and then, then there, there's the other guy um, who just, he, he's, he's just got the one degree. And for some reason it took him, it literally took him like 14, 15 years to, to get that. And you're just like, oh, and now you're a used car salesman. Okay, <laughs> well, um, good luck with that. Uh, yeah. So don't 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 feel down on yourself. There's... Well, I mean, in those the six years I was going to college, I did average at least one sort of certificate every three years. Okay. <laughs> because when I left community college, I actually earned an AA. Yeah. Um, just accidentally trying to fulfill the transfer requirements from mm -hmm. California uh, Community College to California State University. Mm -hmm. there's um 
they let you do that pretty much transferring as a junior, okay. which is cool. Um, but I you know, kind of fucked around for a little bit. So uh, I got my AA. I got my two year degree in three years and I got my four year degree in three years. So mm. <laughs> that's not bad. I think yeah. that evens it out. And I wasn't even trying to get the first one. So, <laughs> Well, that's just dumb luck. Yeah. yeah. Social sciences. What is that? What music is Robin Seto listening to? What do I listen to? I listen, I listen to all kinds of music, including mm-hmm. rap and country. Including um, rap and country. Oh, my word. I mean, I, I don't think I listen to too much stuff that's actually playing on the radio. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, I tend not to worry about what is popular at any given moment. Okay. And, just whatever I want to listen to. I listen to some weird stuff and some dad stuff. What's dad stuff? <laughs> like Steely Dan. Okay. Or like the Alan Parsons Project. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay. Um, you know, uh, but also like the Cocteau Twins mm. and uh, They Might Be Giants is probably my favorite band. Okay. So they might be giants once stayed at the hotel I worked at. Oh, Um, hell yeah. Yeah. I I should have been, should have been more (laughs) professional. That's neither here nor there. Um, What is, who is your favorite band? You're, you're stuck on an Island. Don't worry about you got an unlimited supply. You got solar power (laughs) battery panel. It's okay. You you can listen to your favorite album (laughs) for the rest of your life. What is that album on that Island? Oh man. Just the one album. Just the one album. Mm. I don't know me, man. <laughs> oh, is it a best of album? Is it, it a might... mixtape you made in the eighth grade? <laughs> it might be. It might be. They might be giants. Flood. Okay. What's special um, about Flood? Uh, it was one of the first They Might Be Giants albums that I bought. That wasn't like a, a compilation CD. Hmm. And um, mm. it came out in 1990, which was the year before I was born. And mm. for some reason, my sister always thought that was funny. So I don't know. It's got some really good songs on it. I think it, it does. Um, there's a lot of songs on it. I think it does a good job at showcasing uh, that era of They Might Be Giants. Um, it all really like classic stuff people still love to listen to it they still do flood live shows occasionally uh and they're they're just great just great classic they might be giants songs for they might be giants fans Mm -hmm. they did the uh intro for the courage the cowardly dog cartoon yes no i i'm not sure if they did that they did a couple of small um songs for various cartoon network shows they did one for dexter's lab and they did one for courage the cowardly dog okay yeah okay then they did do one for courage the cowardly dog i said that but it was like a bumper music video yeah um okay same thing (laughs) um they i think they they've done some music that you might be surprised to. I can't think of anything off the top of my head. It's like um. So you suggesting I've heard something uh, famous of theirs? Well, I mean, they're, they're most it's famous impossible. for the Malcolm in the Middle theme song. Is that them? Um, okay. Yes. No. Yeah. Maybe. Yeah. I don't know. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. That's a, and that's a good song. Um, but people are always like, "Oh yeah, that's the Malcolm in the Middle band." Oh. Yeah, okay. <laughs> I mean, yeah. Who's your favorite member of They Might Be Giants? Well, there's two members of They Might Be Giants that mm-hmm. that make up They Might Be Giants and then they have kind of a rotating band. Okay. <clears throat> okay, well it's Coke or Pepsi. Who is it? Oh, it's John and John. John and John. God damn it. <laughs> John Linnell and John Flansburg. Mm-hmm. And they are, they have very interesting chemistry. Um, Sometimes it seems like they are so 
different from each other. They shouldn't get along. And other times it just makes sense that they're such good friends. They're mm-hmm. very interesting, dynamic people. And I just feel like it's, I couldn't pick one. It's like, I can't choose between my children. <laughs> <laughs> Because John Flansburg, well, John Flansburg is um, so dynamic. He he's the like uh, more charismatic, more uh, interactive with the fans. He seems mm. to enjoy interacting with the fans a lot more. Mm. Uh, and John Linnell is he really speaks to like my introvert side. He seems mm. to really like being left alone. A lot of his songs are about like weird things that kind of like float through your head occasionally and you don't spend too much time thinking about them. Mm-hmm. And he'll just write a whole crazy song with crazy lyrics. And um, yeah, you really can't have one without the other. Okay. Uh, <laughs> don't make me choose. <laughs> <laughs> I love you both, Johns. Uh, do they? Is there a favorite music video of theirs that you like? They have some pretty fun music videos. The um, is it the? I think it's the Anna Ang video is pretty funny. Okay. Uh, pretty interesting. I like the videos that have them in it. Mm. They don't really do that anymore because they're they're old. Mm. And if they are in the video, they're like sitting down playing their instruments, which I, I can respect. Or they're standing in front of a mic. And they, I mean, they're, they still move around quite a bit, but it's like, mm. yeah, I get it. You know, you guys are like, you know, going into your 60s here. So, <laughs> Have you ever seen them perform live? I've seen them twice. Oh. I've seen them in Sacramento. One of the few times they came into Sacramento it was mm. fun. Mm. And... Um, and then they played it in Berkeley. And that was fun. Hmm. It was an interesting crowd in Berkeley because it was mostly older people. Hmm. Uh, so they've been around a long time. So was it uh, an arena? Was it a theater? Was it was in. I think it was in the UC Berkeley theater. Okay. And the show was actually delayed by several months because the theater was not completed. Oh. <laughs> they hadn't finished building it. That will that will definitely complicate. Yeah, um, and they were they were pissed about it, but they were nice enough to make a, a, or do a makeup show. So that was that was exciting for yeah. me. Very cool. They sound like some cool dudes. Yeah. Getting anyway. back to art, do you have a do you have a character that you like drawing? Uh, an original drawing, or or <laughs> or even just like just you just doodle Garfield and until yeah, the I end do of time. doodle Garfield a lot, don't I? Mm. <laughs> Garfield's. Uh, I mean, once you kind of figure out the, the basic landmarks of certain trademark characters, um, you can doodle them and they can be recognizable. Mm-hmm. Uh, but the they look weird enough that you know you want to stare at them a little bit longer to figure out exactly why it doesn't look correct (laughs) um i do a lot of garfields i do a lot of bart simpsons um i do a lot of sailor moons Hmm. uh kind of i've been doing more portraits recently those have been fun did one of our friend Samantha Doan. I saw that. Is she eating sushi in that? She's eating uh, Jin Hazjin. Oh, okay. The gotcha. microwave. <laughs> anyway, so yeah, uh, drawing my friends is fun. Just kind of a uh, general, I don't know, kind of whatever is going through my head at the time. I know this is not very exciting. But, this is the uh, get to know you portion of the podcast <laughs> that we are we are getting to know you. <laughs> but yeah, it's like guess what? Art is actually um, not crazy exciting most of the time. It can be. It depends on who you are. <laughs> now, what's your what's your favorite format or or media? Are are you into the, the, just doing the digital tablet, mm-hmm. watercolors, chalk, uh, charcoal? What, what do you like? I would really like to be the most comfortable doing the digital drawing on a tablet. Okay. But um, I find myself really enjoying the feeling of uh, drawing with traditional media, whether it's a 
ballpoint pen or a felt tip marker or mm-hmm. a paintbrush. I like to do a lot of watercolors. I like the way watercolors look and feel when mm-hmm. you're uh, creating depth. Mm-hmm. A lot of layering, I guess it's called glazing technically, but uh, watercolor is probably my favorite and the most uh, satisfying, but I do it probably the least because it takes up a lot of space mm-hmm. and um, a lot of time, neither of which I really have at this moment. <laughs> You and I have been podcasting pretty regularly since I want to say June. Now. Yeah, maybe yeah. maybe July even. Um, do you have a routine that that, that gets you gets you into it before, beforehand? <laughs> I do you do jumping good. jacks? Do you just do you have a favorite <laughs> song you listen to? What? I get into it. I get my drink ready. I got. I do a good restart on my computer. Hmm. <laughs> I got all my stuff plugged in. Um, try to feed my fish. Mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, yeah, I just kind of settle in. Just, um, I mean, I'm in my own room, so it's uh, a little bit different than like coming to a studio mm-hmm. and uh, kind of having a neutral ground to talk to people. Uh, you're all kind of at your home base uh, talking to a piece of equipment. <laughs> I, uh, I I smoke a couple bowls. I also fix a drink. I, I have bubblegum pop playing in the background, just high energy stuff, just to like get get me get me into a into a oh. groove. So that's uh yeah, and then you know all the plugging ins and the the whatnots, sending out the messages and hey, room's open, come on. In. <laughs> oh, you know what I do often do is I I'll have um I'll have some sort of video playing, whether it's a red letter media hmm. or a, a Oni plays or a, a Joel Vine sauce, something, uh, something where people are just kind of casually talking. So I'm all kind of already in that mood of like mm-hmm. shooting the shit. People are just relaxed and chilling out and yeah, kind of fucking around. Uh, I feel like, that's not a conscious decision, I don't think. I think that's just something I'm used to doing. Mm-hmm. But I think it does help me kind of get into the zone. <laughs> okay. Nice. We've had about maybe 15 guests at this point. Mm. Is there someone we haven't talked to yet that you would like to talk to? Um. <laughs> yeah, who do... Who, who... Who who does podcasts? Mm. I haven't actually had my eye on anybody. I mean, yeah, no, <laughs> nobody, nobody, okay. no, no. I'm sorry. I I feel like mm, I don't have that many friends. <laughs> well, we're not we're not talking to your friends, kid. Where, like, is but there an also, artist you would like to talk I, to? Like, I don't know that I'd want to talk to some of these people. No, there, there's not a, a specific like comic uh, book artist or a storyboard animator. Or let's see. I mean, it'd be fun. It'd be fun to talk to to voice actors. It'd be talk to talk to somebody who actually you know does that. Maybe they're not super well known, but does it professionally like that's their bread and butter just mm-hmm. just to see what it's like out there for somebody who's on on that hustle <laughs> okay no 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 one specific in mind i mean uh, i've met billy west before and nice. he is he's very easy to talk to mm-hmm. um and he was on the nerdist podcast with John DiMaggio hmm. and they're on Futurama together and I've probably done a lot of other stuff together too. Um, they're both professional voice actors that I've admired for a really long time mm-hmm. and it would be cool to get them together in a room. <laughs> nice. What's your favorite John LaMarche? Or, uh, did I say that right? Who? Oh, I, I think I just combined two different dudes. 
Uh, Maurice LaMarche and John DiMaggio. <laughs> John DiMaggio. Who's your favorite John DiMaggio <laughs> character? I mean, Bender's pretty good. Okay. Everyone loves the Bender. Everybody loves Bender. Bender's a classic. Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> I'm drawing yeah. a blank here now. That's fine. Because he's done so much stuff. He's in video games. He's been in anime. He's been on Cartoon Network. He's been in Futurama. Mm-hmm. He's uh, I like the 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 trucker dude from Futurama that he does. Mm, I'm mean... sure. I'll bring up a picture later. And you'll know oh. who he is. Okay. Good. Good deal. Good deal. It's five <laughs> years later. Robin said, "Oh, the year is 2026." Oh God. Where are you? What are you doing? Man. It's so hard to say what, where, where any of us are going to be in five you're, years. You're time. 35. I'm 35. I hope. I don't know. I hope I'm not still single. <laughs> 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 it sounds horrible, but mm-hmm. like I would really That's like. Fair. I would really like to. Just not have that on my mind. I would either like to not be single or not be not care about it anymore either okay. one <laughs> the, the the other one's pretty good not caring about it, it yeah it's a lot easier <laughs> um and i imagine it's only going to get harder the older i get and um i don't it's, know it just depends on how much ankle you show mm. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah all right what um, let's see it's five years what are you are you an author? Do you, are, have you had your seventh gallery showing? Are are you producing a cartoon? Are you uh, are you part of a cartoon? Are you a cartoon? But I've transcended human flesh and um, downloaded myself into the cartoon world. Uh, I live only in the in a VR chat now. <laughs> oh no! Are you are, are you are you in Clippy an item? Yeah, I'm her. <laughs> Clippy is a her? I thought Clippy was a guy. No. Uh, <laughs> Clippy is a non-binary. Mm. Oh, her. It, yeah. it, it, the... They are a paper clip. Um, right. Right. Yeah. <laughs> you and Clippy would get along so well. Mm-hmm. I'm always uh, clicking that little Xbox. Xbox. <laughs> <laughs> right. Well, I I hope um I hope that but I have some uh, good opportunities to go visit some breweries or maybe have some good beer perks from my little beer reviews. I mean, uh, yeah. Uh, I would really like to see that go somewhere. I'm pretty impressed with myself already, being able to create content on a schedule. Um, <laughs> This is even something I kind of look forward to doing. Nice. I, I always do it at the last minute, but you still uh, get it done. I feel yeah. like I can extract the most out um, of that small amount of time. Otherwise, if if I give myself too much time, I'll sit on it. I'll add something to it, and then it'll be too long. And then uh, I won't take anything out, and then, and then I'll delete half of it. <laughs> <laughs> and and so I do feel kind of like mm, having it right there without me thinking about it too much uh, benefits it in some way. And I, <laughs> I guess that's always been the way I've written it. Um, anything mm-hmm. is always at the last minute. I've never written a paper before the night before it's due. <laughs> oh. I've done that enough times where I'm just, nope, I'm tired about it. Um, <laughs> I, as of this recording, you still, your, your, your worst review is still a four out of five. I'm, I'm still, I'm still just <laughs> like anticipating when I get that, that review, that's just a one burp, you know, Man. or even a zero burp. Like, I, I, I don't, <laughs> I, I don't know what it would be. I, I, I feel like it would have to, conjure up a lot of feelings for you to actually write the review in the first place like it's 
Yeah. I, I've told you the horror story I had with the grapefruit beer. I was like, yeah. No. For those that haven't heard, like I, I was at a bar. There, there was, you know, they, they had all the normal beers, you know, two fifty, three bucks, not a big deal. But then they were, they had this one promo. It was grapefruit beer for for ninety nine cents, and I was like, well, I got a buck, whatever. And I, I, I took one sip. I immediately placed it back on the bar, and then I ordered a regular beer again. <laughs> and I, I couldn't go any further than that. Like, um. So yeah. Yeah. Well, the truth is, I know kind of which styles I don't like, so mm. I actively won't buy those kinds of beers. Or if it says like extra hoppy or something shitty like that, I won't go for it because I already know. Just because it has a lot of hoppiness, it doesn't make it a good beer. It just makes a really hoppy beer, and if you like that, then it's a good beer to you. And if you don't then you might as well, you know, dump it in the toilet because it kind of smells like pee. So, mm. <laughs> uh, and honestly, even when I'm not totally sure what I'm getting, uh, there aren't, haven't been that many beers that I haven't enjoyed, just not, not kind of going in blind. Mm -hmm. uh, and part what is of your favorite beer? And Oh, and that's, that's another loaded question. Uh, just because there's so many craft beers out there already and so many more coming out. Mm -hmm. There's so much variation between breweries, um, between styles and even within styles. So it's hard to uh, pinpoint just one of anything because you have a lot of limited release stuff on top of that stuff that you'll never get again because they made it once and it's done mm -hmm. <laughs> uh but i know i i know i like sours i know i like saisons okay. i um usually into a nice imperial stout something creamy mm -hmm. uh rice lagers are usually pretty good and are usually pretty good with food they tend to be pretty mild so if you want to if i feel like drinking a beer with my food i'll go for something light like like a rice lager or a pilsner mm -hmm. some 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 easy but you know it's hard to say Yes, this uh this one by Dick's Brewing Company out of Cal Calabasas, California is the best uh beer of all time. It's got the big big nose and the little mm -hmm. heavy and the whatever, but mm -hmm. and and I I would say I'm snobby about beer, but I'm not a beer snob. Mm. What's because, the difference? Um because, I mean, yeah, there's stuff that I just will be like, no, I don't want to drink that. I don't care okay. if it's the only alcohol available. I'm not drinking that. Um, <laughs> um, however, it's like, you know, I don't really like one particular. Uh, I don't like Lagunitas. Okay. I'm just going to say it. I think they're overrated. Sorry if you're out there listening. Mm -hmm. Your beer's not that great. But <laughs> if it's the only thing available at the bar and i'm with friends and i want to have a good time i'll go for the fucking lagunitas it's not a big deal okay um and so and i think it was uh mm -hmm. little sister hayes that suggested i do with the beer sommelier program mm. and kind of why i don't maybe not at this point want to go into studying all that because well it's all out of studying it would be a lot of extra like work for me <laughs> I don't really want to put that energy forth. And, but secondly, part of the, the polite beer expressions, I think, is that they're accessible to people who aren't as familiar with the craft beer world. Mm -hmm. And I feel like once you start getting into terminology like IBU and heaviness, and gravity and shit like that, you lose people. As soon as it becomes esoteric, that's when people are like, well, I don't know what that is. <laughs> um, and... I want to make it approachable. So, you know, uh, I think a lot of what I'm doing now, what I'm, my goals are, are trying to be kind of more broadly accessible to people, not, you know, people who have a specific interest, um, but not make 
that one thing so like niche that people from the outside can't see how it's enjoyable. Um, part of a, a weird comparison I get is um, like, I really like fish keeping. I have one, two, three, four, five fish tanks in my bedroom. Five right fish now. tanks. <laughs> yeah. Mm. How, many, um, how many fish between the, the, the collective five? Well, let's see. I have one 10 gallon tank. It currently has probably about, um, probably about a dozen dozen fish in there okay. um probably probably around let's see i have seven they're endlers live bearers they're mm -hmm. guppies and then some tiny catfish and like a hundred snails a <laughs> hundred snails well they're like the size uh they're smaller than like a pea okay. they're pretty tiny and then wow. one that's like the size of like a golf ball <laughs> i'd be surprised if there was 20 snails in my backyard and i mean we got <laughs> snails but i've never Never, never pictured a hundred collective. Um, there are a lot of them. There are a lot of snails. I like snails. Uh, and then I have a lot of betta fish. This Chinese, Siamese fighting fish, I guess. Mm. Is what some people know them as. Mm. They each have their own tank because they can't be kept together. <laughs> course, naturally, naturally, yeah. they just fight. They um, will kill each other. What's um, your most expensive fish? Um, or snail or whatever. Well, my most expensive fish right now is probably my um my half moon king beta. What I is call, that? He is a giant blue beta fish. Um, okay. but he's got um what they call placket or placket placot mm -hmm. fin, which means uh usually when you see a beta fish, you think of like the flowy flowy fins or whatever. Mm -hmm. These ones have more shorter fins. They look a little bit more wild. Hmm. Um, he's this really cool shade of blue, and I named him Dr. Manhattan. <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh, boy. And I probably paid the most for him. Uh, he's got, uh, you know, fish are fun, but um, as obsessed as I am with fish, as it seems, uh, I could go even deeper into it. Mm -hmm. I just don't have the desire. So the same thing is with beer, where it's like, if I wanted to take that next step into the beer sommelier thing, I could. But right now, I, I don't know. Or, and with fish, I, mm, I could take the jump into breeding guppies right now, but mm, mm. I don't want to do that. <laughs> like that's That would take my hobby and make it work. And I don't want to do that right now. Like Everyone's got to like, have, a, have a principle. Like you got to... Yeah, put your foot down and say no. Yeah, I mean, at this point, I think I'm still kind of finding my hustle, so I don't want to just like jump into something and not have anything left to try something else. Mm -hmm. Does that That's... make any sense? Sure. Yeah. So I don't know. I'm I'm very cautious. I feel like these days I am trying to be more thoughtful about other people and okay. how other people are, um, might interpret stuff mm -hmm. that like I, I put out there into the world as far as my reviews or my fun games or whatever I'm doing. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Just trying to be uh, a little more considerate of everything else. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Okay. It's, what, what's a fish you want to own uh, what? or, or what's a fish that you miss owning? <laughs> well, it would be cool to have space for some kind of giant fish. Okay. Like, Oh, I'd love to own an arowana someday. And what's that? Uh, there's this long, really kind of crazy looking. I think they're related to catfish. They look kind of like big eels and they're silver. Yeah, these big crazy bodies and this big old crazy mouth. Mm -hmm. um, and they're pretty highly prized among fish keepers and like Asian fish keepers. Uh, and they tend to be pretty expensive. I don't really know how hard they are to keep. I just know they look really cool and it'd be cool to have one. <laughs> okay. Uh, I haven't really looked too much into 
actually keeping them because at this point it's really not a possibility you do need a lot of space they get pretty big um right now i'm pretty satisfied with my 10 gallon it's it's a little uh bio sphere experiment where i have a dirted bottom and i'm trying to get the plants to kind of create a good um cycle where their plants are actually doing the filtering for me so i don't have to change the water eventually okay what what is the, what is the upkeep on that right now like how you got all the filters and everything but how many times are you changing the water or uh, and you, you you still have five tanks so yeah i try to change the water every seven to ten days wow um and it's not all the water it's about 25 percent of the Oh, interesting. At a time. Okay. Um, and that's just because um, you, you really don't want to take too much water out of a fish tank when you do a water change because there's a natural nitrogen cycle. There's uh, established cool. bacteria in the water that kind of help break down the fish waste. Mm -hmm. And when that isn't present, enough of that bacteria isn't present, it can actually cause... Um, the fish to get sick from the ammonia in their own waste. Oh, wow. Uh, so, Oof. yeah, you don't want to do too much at a time. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I, uh, my cousin used to have a, I don't know how many gallons it was, but it was, it was GD huge, you know. And, <laughs> um, he would empty it like 95% of the way, like at the very least, you know. And <laughs> it was a whole thing where you'd have to like get a hose and uh, siphon it yeah. uh, so in, into a bucket mm -hmm. and then take them out, take it out five gallons at a time. And Jeez. Finally, after a decade, he's just like, yeah, I can't do this anymore. Um, well, what did he keep in there? He had, a, I think at one point, at most, he had like seven different fishes. Um, I can show you photos later. <laughs> um, I, I wouldn't know the difference between any of them, but the, there was there was some prison level offenses in there at, at times. Like we, <laughs> we, we would see some fish get fucked up. Um, we would oh, definitely yeah. see some fish like that had been traumatized enough where they just hide in the castle. And mm -hmm. and wait for the big guy to eat first, and then they'll they'll get whatever he didn't take. <laughs> um, yeah, I had an asshole fish like too. that. Yeah, he kept eating my neon tetras. Yeah, he, he had one fish that did get so big that uh, once it eventually <laughs> did pass away, I, I I had had the nerve to go. Well, did you cook it? Like, because oh you can't God. flush it down the toilet. Okay, like Jesus. I, I don't know. If, I don't even know if those things are edible, but it just seems like a waste to just throw away. Like. <laughs> You could give it to the cat. Did you give it to the cat? I, I didn't get a well, serious answer. You give answer. it a proper Viking burial. It's just, it's just going to get dug up by the coyotes, though. <laughs> All right. that, that, now, that's a fact these days. Whoops. Oops. So, yeah. Uh, fish. <laughs> fish. Yay. Uh, yeah. I once upon a time wanted to have a, a fish tank behind, behind my bed. You know, like as part of the shelf or the backboard, and uh, I'm so glad I didn't because I, yeah, I it never occurred to me at the time of this stupid fantasy that like, oh yeah, I'd have to change that water out so much, and it would just get on the mattress. It, like, it, I was in this in this apartment where my room, <laughs> my room is this big, so my the the bed literally fits this way. Oh, um, and it, it it it's great in that shoebox because there's there's more shoebox at the other end of the uh, room, but yeah. Um, anyways. <laughs> Robin, this we, we're, we're, we're about to go to an hour. Um, mm -hmm. Is there anything else you want to reveal? Is, uh, did I not ask a specific question? I feel like we had a good time doing this. I feel like we could still get to know you more, but I also, we get to know you every week on the microdose. This That's true. not a plug. That's just a just a statement. <laughs> That's just a fact of life. Um, no, I think we hit on everything. It's just I'm kind of an artsy fartsy kind of hippy dippy mm -hmm. Sacramento weirdo. <laughs> okay, yeah, so, that's 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 astute. Uh, yeah, just like to like to have a good time. I'm still still evolving and kind of finding my footing and i'm really into just uh trying to trying out new stuff trying mm -hmm. trying not being afraid to fail i think is go. kind of my mantra this this past year year and a half mm -hmm. <laughs> so, 
Just you're you're definitely one of the busiest ones on the Bosnet roster. Um, <laughs> I, I put that about me section together about a week ago, and you know, like J- Jamil's got his spot, and little sister Hayes has her 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 official credits, and Amanda Thomas obviously has her show, and then you know me, I I'm me, so I've got four or five <laughs> hats, but you uh, on the same page also have like two to three hats, and I was like, ah, that's great. I wish wish we had more of those. So, um. <laughs> Robin, uh, we, we, we spoke about it earlier. Tell people about Polite Beer Expressions real quick. Oh, well, of course. You know, if you are interested in checking any of those beer reviews out, you can find those at the Bosnet.family. And every Wednesday, a new one will go up at noon California time. Uh, try to, I, I try to mix it up. I try not to do too many repeat breweries or too many back-to-back styles. I try try to do all sorts of fun stuff. Um, not sure what's coming up next week. It's always a surprise. <laughs> it's uh, it's definitely a, a nice treat when I get that that notification. Like you have a new review. I'm like, yeah. <laughs> so I'm always happy to get those posted up as soon as I can. Um, we do the microdose once a week, sometimes more than once a week, but uh, mainly those will drop Fridays at noon. Um, again, this is. A lot of time will have passed in between, but yesterday we we published an episode with Good Bad Flicks, Cecil Trakenberg, whose name I probably just butchered again. <laughs> but we, <laughs> I think we had, we had said a great it was uh, Cecil Trachenberg. Sure. Uh, he, we'll, we'll have to go back to the tape on that. But <laughs> Forgive mm, us. For, forgive us, Cecil. <laughs> um. Everything else about me, you know where to find me. I'm at that place with the smiling dog. Otherwise, I've been Kush Hayes. I'm Mary Robin. And you've all been you. Thank you so much for listening. Thanks for getting to know Robin. Hey! Micro dose, 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 yeah, micro dose. From the Bosnet family. Settle like ghetto, you know.